Hi, so uh, my name is Marti Bosk and I'm a PhD student here at uh, the Urban and Regional Planning Community of EPFL. So I'm going to present you, I think it's going to be less exciting than what uh, Dimitri showed us because like uh, it's more, uh, I work on images and uh, the, possible, the possibilities of LIDAR are way more exciting. But uh, still, I didn't know he was going to present before me, so <laughs> not much I can do about that. So I'm going to go very quickly through the types of uh, urban trees, that uh, data sets that we can find right now. So first of all, there's the catalogs, like uh, this example of Geneva. So we have a georeference list of trees with maybe uh, some added information, like uh, the species I mentioned and so on. So as I say, this is the main uh, pros of these kind of uh, data sets. But the cons, it's of course that uh, they're done by manual service and also that they're often restricted to public space. So because if I have a big garden, they, they're not gonna, maybe they're not gonna get into my garden just to do a survey of the trees that I have inside it. Then we have these canopy height models, which is a bit what uh, Dimitri talked about. This is an example of Montreal. So it's a raster and each pixel, it's uh, the height of the tree. And uh, the pros of this is that they can be automatically uh, built from raw LIDAR data. So from these uh, clouds of points. The cons is that the uh, LIDAR data is expensive and, and, not, uh, and that we cannot derive them from just, we usually find uh, digital surface models that are derived from LIDAR data. But if we wanna get the trees of, uh, out of LIDAR data, we need the raw LIDAR data which is not so easy to find. And there are relatively few open uh, raw LIDAR data sets. So this is why I created this uh, library. Uh, the idea is uh, that we give uh, a high resolution aerial image and we get uh, just a binary raster of tree and non-tree pixels. So this is the idea pretty much. And uh, this is the example that uh, I show in the library for Zurich. And it's a supervised learning problem, uh, very typical. We have a set of M pixels. For each pixel, we compute a, a feature vector of 27 components, which are information of color, texture, and entropy. And then we have the response for this training set of whether the pixel is a tree or not. I have to say the idea is not mine. Uh, I took it from uh, this paper that by some guys at Google. And uh, there are some other guys, I saw some blog posts of people that implemented it, but I didn't find anything, any open source tool to do it. So this is why I decided to create Detectory. And uh, I'm gonna go through the uh, computational workflow that it takes from the images to the tree maps. So first of all, we need to split our image into tiles. So uh, maybe the data set already comes into tiles, but if not, we should do it. I include a, a function that uh, does it, so, but it's not a rugged science. And uh, then we do the train test split. So we could use a random sampling to do this, just select 1% of the tiles. But, and this is important, we should have tiles that are as representative as possible of uh, our data set. So if I'm here in Lausanne and one tile of my 1% training set is the lake, there's not gonna be trees there, so it's not gonna be too helpful. And similarly, if I give a tile that it's a forest, everything's gonna be trees. That's not gonna help the classifier a lot. So we have to choose this training set smartly. So uh, we want to optimize this representativity and uh, we do it by computing a GIS descriptor. So it's basically a, a vector that describes uh, some characteristics of the tile. So color, texture, and so on. Then we apply k-means to the list of uh, descriptors for the tiles with uh, a number of clusters equal to the number of tiles that we want to put on the training. So, and then for each cluster, we're gonna get the 
the tile whose GIS descriptor is closest to the centroid of the cluster. This way, we optimize this representativity of different scenes that are in the city, or at least we attempt to do it. And uh, so in the track tree, I'm not gonna go through the API and uh, et cetera, but we are gonna build a training selector. We, we put the path to where the tiles are located and some other parameters are possible. And we ask for a train test split and it's gonna give us a data frame with the list of tiles and whether the tiles should be used for training or not. So uh, if I just want to see which ones uh, have to be included in training, in this case, we would have these three tiles. And in this example, we had uh, 225 tiles. So for 1% of the data, we should need uh, 2.25 tiles. So we took three just to have a bit more. And this is, uh, since it's supervised learning, we need to have some ground truth. And this is kind of the, uh, the part that cannot always be fully automated. So uh, basically we can use Photoshop and do it by hand and so on. Or we could also use LIDAR to get this ground truth. Uh, this ground truth. And uh, in the case of Zurich, which is the example pictures that I'm showing you, uh, there's the LIDAR, which is completely open. So the workflow that there's in this repo here uh, is fully automatic. It's going to build a ground true from, uh, it's going to download LIDAR from Zurich, build a ground true, and then train the model and so on. But sometimes you might, if there's no LIDAR data there, you're probably going to have to use Photoshop or anything to build the responses. And then we train a classifier. So this is basically a typical machine learning problem from a, from vectors of 27 dimensions to a response of whether this is a tree or not. And uh, so again, I'm not gonna go through the API, but we have this object that's called a classifier trainer that we can, uh, we can uh, configure with some parameters. We give them the split data frame that uh, the tech tree has computed before and the path, the path where the response tiles are located. So these, I edit these uh, pictures with Photoshop maybe, and I put them in this folder with the same name. So, and the directory is gonna automatically uh, build the features, et cetera, train the model, and it's gonna return us a uh, scikit-learn classifier. And in this case, it's another boost classifier. This is what uh, the guys in Google did in their paper. So once I have this, I can very easily classify an image, which uh, should give us something like that. And okay, <laughs> this is why I wanted to use the web version and not the PDF. <laughs> so uh, then, so it's an important note, the pixel level classification can be noisy because like there's this color information. So there might be grass considered as uh, trees, there might be as well, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, some pixels inside trees that are not classified as trees. So we use uh, an algorithm of computer vision called the GraphCAD's algorithm to ensure that these uh, classified pixels are consistent. So we can see the difference here. If we didn't use that GraphCAD's algorithm, we have these all, all these noisy points uh, in the middle, but uh, this is a parameter that we can adjust. So maybe I set it too high here and I'm uh, getting out parts that are actually trees, but you can configure it. And uh, also if we want to classify all tiles, uh, we can use uh, this method which has Dask, works with Dask, so it's gonna do it in parallel. So uh, why is it useful? Well, there is a lot of data sets of high image high resolution ortho imagery. So for instance, we have this data set of the whole United States. And uh, compared to LIDAR, it's very lightweight. In Geneva, for instance, I was interested in using the LIDAR, but uh, it's 300 gigabytes. And if I use the same data of uh, ortho imagery, it's just one gigabyte. The cons is that we only have binary pixel level classification. If the tree species or dimensions and so on are important, it's not the best approach. But the scope is when, if we are only interested in 2D, so like how many tree cover is there in this neighborhood and so on, these kind of questions, 
maybe the three dimensions are not so relevant. We just want to see uh, the proportion of tree cover. If LIDAR is not available, we can use this to get a grasp of the trees. If LIDAR is available, but it's too expensive, or if LIDAR is available, but you don't, want, you don't need that precision and you don't want to process so many data. And just the example why I did this very quickly. So I want to simulate uh, urban heat islands in Lausanne. This is the land cover map that I have at 10 meters. And uh, I want to use it to predict uh, air temperature. And uh, this is a function of uh, mainly three uh, biophysical mechanisms, which is evapotranspiration, shade, and the albedo. So uh, these, uh, the problem is that pixels of the same land cover can have very different tree cover. And this tree cover has a lot of effects on the evapotranspiration, shading, and albedo. So uh, here's where I use the tech tree. I refine the classification into different uh, subclasses. So for instance, if I have roads, I'm gonna divide it into roads that have high tree cover, intermediate tree cover, or low tree cover. So uh, I moved from 25 into 100 uh, land use classes. And you can see here that these parts that are like gardens and so on. Now we have a lot of uh, more spatial complexity that I hope that increases the precision of of my model, which uh, is going to come soon. And thank you.